Hello guys and welcome back to the CCNA video series brought to you by ABY Design and Tech. This video is going to serve as an introduction to the world of submitting. Now submitting is great, it's covered in the exam. People think it's very difficult but if you've been watching this series and you watch the next three or four videos you will understand it's actually very very simple. So the learning objectives for this video will be to understand what submitting is and why we need it. So let's begin with the biggest question of all, what is submitting? Well, a subnet is just a subnetwork of a class A, B or C network. So earlier in the series, we've covered class A, B and C networks. Class A network, just as a recap, allows for 16 million hosts per network, class B, 65,000 hosts per network, and class C, 254 hosts per network. Now the problem with class A and B and not so much with class A, is that with class A and B networks, they allow for too many hosts to connect to that network. Essentially, we're going to have too many wasted IP addresses. The reason being is because as a rule of thumb, generally, we shouldn't have more than around 500 hosts connect to a single network, and even that's pushing it. The reason being is because broadcasts are being generated. Now, if we have many hosts which connect to a network and they're all generating broadcasts every single second, two things will happen. Our links will be saturated with broadcast traffic. Also, our devices are going to be receiving those broadcasts, processing them, and we'll not have enough time or enough processor power to send and receive the ROM traffic. So having a large amount of devices in a network is not recommended. And class A and B, there's no way in hell that we're going to see networks that large ever in our lifetime. Now, let's have a look at how submitting works. So we take a normal class A, B or C network. In this case, we have a class A network, 10 which allows for 60 million hosts per network, again, far too much. And instead of using this entire class A block, we are going to be using a section a subsection, a small portion of that network. So now, we're breaking up, we're submitting, we break up a single class A, B or C network into chunks, into small chunks. In this case, we're going to be using the subnet 10.01.0.24, which allows for 254 hosts per subnet. And so this is a subnet. So now we've reduced our slash A network into a slash 24, this subnet still falls within the 10.0.0.8 network, hence the reason why it's called a subnet, because it's just a network within a network, it's just a sub-network. Let's have some more examples of subnets. So as an example, this 172.16.1.0.24, sorry, slash 25, that's going to be a subnet, because it's a... Um, it's a subnetwork of the class B network, 172.16/16. 35.22.3.8/slash 30. That's going to be a subnet of class A network, 35.000/slash 8. Now, interestingly, 192.164, sorry, sorry, 192.168.100/24 is a class E network. It is it, not a subnet. However, 192.168.1.0/26 is a subnet. And the reason is, is because this up here adheres to class C rules. So class C dictates that a class C network has to have a slash 24 mask. So we're using the entire um, block of IP addresses in this network. However, this down here is a subnet because we're only using a portion of the class C addresses available to us of the class C network. Now, the next question you guys probably have is, Abdo, why do we need submitting? And so, like I said before, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we need submitting because the number of addresses provided by class A and B networks is far too much. And a lot of the time, our networks will even be smaller than class C networks. But the problem we're having is that we can only use a limited number of addresses because we're only supposed to be using private IP addressing within our enterprise network. So we've only got one class A network, 16 class B networks, and 256 class C networks. Not a lot of, not a lot of networks available to us. And chances are, we're going to have a lot of wasted IP addresses because we're not going to have very, very large networks. If you think about it, the links between our branch sites are going to be point-to-point -point links, which will, which will only require two um, IP addresses. We, we may have VLANs which only require 30 IP addresses, 40 IP addresses. And so class A, B, and C does not cater to our needs. So like I said before, more was class A and B and less was class C, but class A and B provide a massive wastage of IP addresses. And to really 
see this so that this hits home let's walk through an example so in this case this is our enterprise network in an enterprise network we have a headquarters site which would be the largest of our sites we have branch site one and we have branch site two and these are the requirements for each site so we have a, we have point to point links linking our sites together we have 200 hosts for the headquarters site 120 hosts for the branch site over here and 50 hosts for the branch site over there now the the def the first design solution that we can use in terms of an ip addressing scheme is going to be to use class c networks now that meets our requirements in providing enough um addresses available for each segment so for each branch office for each point to point link we have enough ip addresses we have a lot of wastage which is a drawback but however, however one of the major drawbacks is that with class c networks we only have 256 networks available to us if we have more than 256 sites then we're already in trouble hence hell hell if we have um even more than 128 branch sites we even we, we still have an issue because remember we still need to have a subnet or a network for each of our point-to-point -point links so we're having issues there so design solution one that's thrown out the window the reason being not enough networks and and so literally not enough networks and that's really it and also wastage of ip addresses as well because we have 254 available ip addresses however we're only using two which is a massive waste now design solution two this is where we use submitting so obviously let's say we've got 300 branch sites we need to be able to have 300 subnets so we use a class a network we submit that down which gives us more than enough subnets available to meet our requirements um and we also have enough ip addresses per host uh, for, for each host however we still have a massive wastage because we're still using a slash 24 for our point-to-point -point links these links only need to have two IP, ip addresses we're using 254 so design solution two while it goes closer to meeting our requirements it's not perfect now design solution three that does meet both of our requirements in that we have enough subnets available to us but also we're wasting the least amount of ip addresses so as you can see we are using subnet masks based on the requirements of each network segment so we, we are using a slash 24 for the headquarters site because we have 200 hosts we were using slash 30 for the point-to-point -point links which allow for two usable IP addresses, again, meeting our requirements perfectly. A slash 25 for site two, uh, which allows for 128 um, IP addresses, 126 hosts, which meets our requirements because we only need to have 120 hosts. And we're using a slash 26 for site three, which gives us 64 usable IP addresses, which allows for 50 hosts. So as you can see, not only are we meeting the requirements of, of how many hosts we need, but we're also meeting the subnet requirements and we're, we're wasting as few amount of IP addresses as we can. Now, solution three and solution two, they're both submitting. However, solution three, that is variable less subnet masking. So with, with variable less subnet masking is a concept which we will dive into further in, late, in a later video. But with variable less subnet masking, we are using a customized subnet mask for every single one of our network segments. So depending on the requirement of the network segment will depend on what size subnet mask we use. Solution two was subnetting, but that was fixed length subnet masking in that we use the same subnet mask for every one of our network segments. Variable length subnet masking is preferred, but you have to keep track of it better because obviously you're going to be using different subnet masks for each one of our network segments and you have to make sure that there's no address overlap now when we're coming up with a subnet design and we want to create a subnet design so we can assign subnets to segments and assign ip addresses to hosts there are two things we need to consider and these are the two most important things which we, which we will go into in depth in a later video is how many hosts we need to have per subnet and how many subnets we have because that will dictate what class of network we're going to use, whether we're going to start with the class A, B, or C network, and what subnet mask we're going to use as well. So those are the two most important questions when coming up with a subnet design. And again, we'll cover these in depth in a later video. And that's all there is to it. That is subnetting in a nutshell. So as you can see, we know we need subnetting because we need to waste as few as 
IP addresses as possible. And we also need to be able to meet all requirements of how many subnets we need and how many hosts we need per subnet. But most importantly, subnetting is just a process of taking a class A, B or C network and breaking them up into smaller chunks known as subnets. If you found this video useful and would like to see more content like this, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching.